like downstairs we mixed up some primer the base resin for reinforcing the joints obviously we've used tongue groove boards on this one so literally all we have to do is literally mix up some primer and flood the joints and literally the idea is we're flooding that joint so we don't get any air popping up through the actual board itself so again we'll take the lid off and we'll give it a good mix just to make sure we've got all the primer nice and well gone over give that a wipe off and then just put some into the bucket now we're going to use roughly about a litre on this one and then always remember put your lid back on because obviously you don't want any contamination going into that and just put that to one side out of the way now Anytime we do a mix, whether it's with the primer or the actual main uh, 2020 resin, we need to take a temperature reading. Now that's a temperature reading of the actual deck. Don't use your phone. Your phone will give you sort of ambient temperature of the area. Obviously you can get a reading on that straight away. So we're looking at in degrees. So we'll measure the deck temperature. That's give us 15.6. So if you look at the back of the can, We've got roughly about a litre of mix in there. We go across and we're looking at uh, 15 degrees and we're looking at three scoops and that's as far as it, as hard as it gets guys. So temperature, consult your chart, tea litrage and then put the associated scoops in. Now when you get your uh, hardener or your catalyst, you'll open up your bucket and you'll get two bags of hardener. Now obviously this is carcinogenic guys so you want to do it in a well ventilated area and obviously don't lean over the mix while you're pouring it in, okay? So cut your bag, pour it in nice and slowly so it isn't going all over the place and obviously you don't want it all over your roof as well. Now with the scoops, we've got to put three scoops in. So what we want to do is we don't want overloaded scoops. We just want nice level scoops. You know, you can always use your finger, brush it off and then put those in accordingly. Do not under catalyze because it won't go off properly and if you over catalyze you'll actually bake it too fast. Always get in a good habit of putting your lids back on guys because you can potentially get dust and debris into your mix and obviously that becomes a that becomes a problem then. You can use a whisk, you can use if you're doing a small amount like myself uh, just a mixing stick and just give it a mix for about a minute or so so you can make sure that part and that goes throughout the mix and like I say on this one we've used tongue and groove boards on this all we'll be doing is running with our roller straight down the board joint with some resin on and flooding that joint on there and away we go using eight before sheets for instance we'd be putting reinforcing tape in and then going back over with the uh, roller to consolidate that in and you'll see you'll get the same swirly patterns on that as you would do when we do this reinforcing round here basically when you take the tin lids off you'll see a the, the resin is quite a dark colour. What you need to do is the wax actually comes to the top of the surface. So you need to get a whisk, keep it on a low setting and literally give it a whisk and give it a whisk for about a minute or so. And you'll see the colour start to change. Get the excess off your whisk and always put it back on the roof. Uh, on a lid or something like that because you don't want any excess uh, resin going onto the roof because that'll be uncured resin. So you'll need a couple of buckets. So we'll stick roughly about a litre or so in each of these. And again, on the, on the tins, they've got the charts on there. So obviously we've got roughly about a litre or so of a product in there. And we'll do a temperature measure again. And that'll give us the associated scoops we need for each, each pass. Just read the temperature now. So we've got 19.5 degrees. So 19 degrees, a litre of products, 19 degrees, that'll give us two scoops again. Okay, so again, 
have your hardener. And you always put level scoops in, never have heaped scoops. So just shake that off, get the excess off. And put that in. And then just mix it roughly for about a minute or so. If you imagine it a bit like sugar, where you need it to dissolve in a cup of tea, uh, you just need to get that amalgamated into the resin. If we're doing a bigger mix, we'll use the whisk, but obviously a smaller mix, we'll just use a, a mixing stick or a spatula or whatever you've got to hand, as long as it's clean. So what we're going to do, I'll pre-cut some strips and what the idea of these are, are where we've got a joint for this for instance, we're literally going to put a bit of resin up the, up the yep. wall, put these into it yep. and then a bit more resin over the top and then we're looking for a, sway, uh, a swervy pattern. Yep. So I'll do one and just show you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so there's a couple of ways of doing this. You can dunk your roller in, coat the area. You want to put a fair, fair amount on and there's a couple of ways you can coat both sides which is normally the better way because it'll break, the styrene in the system will break down the glue on both sides of the, the matting and put it on. And while that's all coloured in grey, you'll find that that'll start breaking down. So just run a little bit more resin over the top and then any excess resin like that, just run it into the actual trim itself because otherwise you're going to have to sand that down at a later date and it just causes pain. when you're um, doing your laps I tend to do it in a meter strip just so I can keep control so I'll put my first one down grade up put my second one down grade that one up and then come back and by this time this should be ready to consolidate so I'll show you that as I'm going through now joining matting to matting you always want to make sure you've got a fluffy edge or a torn edge if you've got a straight edge, you can join them onto it, but when you're consolidating it, you've got to work a lot harder to break that edge down. So I find just having a fluffy edge is a lot easier to work with. Roughly 50 to 75 mil overhang. Semi-dry roller to pull that resin straight through the matting. So I'll go back now and test. You can just see those hairs starting to move. And that's how we know we can touch that now. So a little bit more resin on the roller, over the top, and then just agitate that it goes quite quite swirly and this is the detail we look for when we're looking at the consolidation of the roof so if it's straight straight like that it's not so good but when you've got the swirly pattern you can see the difference between them both any excess resin just run it into the roof because otherwise you're gonna to have to sand that down So basically what we've done now is we've gone around all the base of the perimeters where the um, trim meets the actual bottom edge of the board and we've reinforced that edge all the way around. Uh, obviously there's a lot of detail on this roof so what we've decided to do is basically get the perimeter trim on and get the first coat of waterproofing down onto the roof uh, just due to the fact that we know there's going to be showers over the weekend. Uh, normally what we would do is put the tape on and then obviously coat up and the same on the perimeters. So we'd put our trims on uh, and then coat up again, obviously. But due to the fact of the weather, we're just gonna sheet these over and get the actual deck down so we can get the waterproofness there on the roof. Uh, so the uh, customer's property doesn't get damaged, uh, which is another good bonus about the, the resin that we're using. Uh, the 2020 system is the first coat, if it's put down correctly, is a waterproof coat. So you've then got your last coat to go on, which is the, the top, to top coat or the gel coat, as some people call it. Once you've put your, um, your first deck down, uh, your first layer of laminate down, uh, you're looking at about seven days before you need to put your top coat on. Uh, once you've got the whole system on, uh, you're looking uh, for roughly about a 20 year, uh, you've got to get a 20 year uh, materials warranty, uh, but you're looking for an average of a 50 year life expectancy on the actual product itself. But at the moment we've reinforced it all and we're just waiting now for that to dry and then we'll cut our mat in and get the base coat done and then come back and get the, uh, the top edges done.
basically what we're doing now is we're putting the outlets on. So obviously with this client, we, we were, had a, a bit of time constraint regarding the weather. So we got the whole deck waterproof. Uh, we've now dried the deck off and we're retrofitting the outlets. So literally we've put the hole through the wall and we've actually cut back on the, on the fillet trims and we've tried to keep it quite far back. So as we put the vent in, as, uh, the outlet, sorry, we can get a nice seamless finish with the fiberglass glass down both edges. And we also have taken it down a little bit on the front edge, just so we don't get a lip for the outlet uh, to stop any water impeding the outlet, basically. So we'll keep that down, fiberglass glass over the top, and then literally we'll get the, uh, the water flowing nicely out of the outlet. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use some uh, OB1 now. I'm going to put a bit of glue on the back edge, it's just so we've got that solid adhesion, as well as onto the actual deck itself. And we'll do some on the, the lower deck as well. Just set it out and just rub it in. There we go. Can you get that? Obviously, we've put the put the outlet on a slight incline as well so it helps the water dissipate from on the roof and then again we're just going to push back nice and tight get that really firm into the back edge tack for our first nail make sure it's in the position we want I'm happy it's at the back it's not going to move and then just tack those off and again then Keep the groups nice and tight on these, so obviously you don't want any movement on your outlet. And again, we'll do the back as well. And again, tack both ends. Make sure it's where roughly where you want it to be. You don't have to worry about your uh, your nail holes protruding through the uh, the back of the trim because we're going to fiberglass down over this and we're also going to reinforce that before we do our final sheet of fiberglass down over and then on the top we're going to have our 90 external trim straight over the corner so that will form that corner and obviously we step the boards back just to allow for that radius edge. What we're going to do now, we're going to start doing the, the, the upper edge trim. Uh, obviously, we're going to have aluminium cappings on this. So what we want is a nice waterproof tight seal. And obviously, this, is, this goes back to this, what I was saying about where we step the, step the boards down. So we step this face board down and we've also stepped the top board back just to incorporate this radius edge. And we'll just cut that just over. And what I tend to do on my trims, everybody fits these slightly differently. So you find your own way. But what I tend to do is, step this back slightly when i set the next trim on on this uh, 90 degree i'll also step that back and i'll let the fiberglass form that corner so you've got the round off this edge the round off the, the actual corner itself and the round off the trim that you're going to be putting on and then that way then the fiberglass will mold around that and you'll just double laminate that corner and basically it just gives that a little bit more strength to that corner edge so when i'm putting these trims on what i'll do is obviously using ob1 on this obviously it's good adhesion on the trims good habit to get into is obviously clean clean the uh, back of the trims off because obviously you get the fiberglass dust on there so if you can seal down the back I tend to do is I'll push in nice and tight, pin the top, pin the middle, and pin the very end. And again, I'll work from the middle then out. What we will do then is fiber glass from this edge all the way across. So this board gets completely fiber glassed in. And then when they come along with their aluminium trim, I'll put their clips on, screw through, because I've got decent fixing underneath. But well, they've also got a, an extra waterproofing layer as well. So it gives you that little bit of more resistance. On the front edge, I'll also pin as well. So again, same premise. And you'll notice 
this. I'll keep those groupings really tight because obviously as it goes along you'll probably find it cups so if you keep those nice and tight it gets it nice and flat against that surface and again from this edge we'll reinforce this with tape and then we'll go over it then with an extra layer of fiberglass. In this instance with the uh, Flexitech 2020 we use the reinforcing bandage and then we use the 225 gram matting over the top edge as well and again exactly the same on the top. Anytime the trim touches a board it should be reinforced so that just gives you that extra bit of strength on there. So what I'll do there is I'll just set this back slightly and again I'll just fiberglass over that corner so obviously I'll get rid of this hole and I'll also make sure that's double laminated but I step that back so we've got the round off this this edge the round off this edge and the round off this edge helping to create that that shape on that that overall corner and again clean your trims seal the back edge and then tack both ends tack the middle and then work from your middle outwards and that stops your trim cupping then On this section guys, what you'll notice is in most of the manufacturers booklets they'll say come over roughly about 50 mil. I always take mine roughly about 75, it's just I'd rather have that little bit more support on that edge. Mark off that edge and again, we'll turn your trim around, adhesive on the back. We'll make sure you've got two nice lines of adhesive down there as well because obviously then the trim will actually stick to each other as well which is fantastic. So you've got two, two layers of protection plus the fibre glass so you've got the first layer of mastic plus the second so that'll stop any water getting in behind and then again this lip here will get reinforced and then we'll fibre glass from that edge just below roughly about 10 mil below there so that'll encapsulate that completely so that that whole lip will be hidden in the fibre glass. When we just put this on, I'll just put it just slightly past, fold that over, and I'll just rub that forward and backwards just to get that, that edge detail nice and flat. Because we're going through probably four layers of trim at this stage, because we've got an overlap, plus we've got this detail, I'll just use a nail to pin this one now. Set so the middle, make sure we're happy. Always checking back on your line as well because you want to try and get that as in line as possible. It's not always possible with brickwork, but the better you can do it, it just helps that line of the work and makes your work look a lot better. Any pins that don't go in, for instance, you just want to take those out because that'll impede your fiberglass and just make sure you can get some decent fixings. So it's always nice to have a few nails as backup because you can't always get them with the pins but it is a little bit faster with the actual pins itself. I'm just going to cut a, an exaggerated 45 on this corner because I want to try and keep the keep the trims flat as it goes around the corner. So literally I'll cut the exaggerated 45 there. It doesn't have to be perfect because you're going to fiberglass over this anyway but again the better you can do your trims the tighter you'll get your corner. So I'm just going to lay that on there and push that into the corner. So now I'll do a rough 45 on this side and then literally we'll fiberglass over this corner. We'll strengthen this, this edge because this is going to be a weak point. And then again, we'll uh, seam tape or fiberglass tape these edges. And then from this point up to this edge, we'll go over with fiberglass again. So that's doubly reinforced or uh, potentially double laminated over that edge. Sandpaper, I didn't want to make it smooth. 
means you can just this bit of loads and loads of little grooves in there. And the reason I'm putting this primer on is to make sure the fiber glass will stick to the metal in a really good way because you would use it like an SP1 primer if it's a plastic base. So uh, what we're going to do now, we've done our upstands, totally waterproofed, it's consolidated. We're happy that it's waterproof. So what we'll do now is we'll look at sanding down. So what we're looking for is any issues that you've potentially got with the fiberglass. If you're looking for pinholes, you're looking for sharp edges, uh, we call them wicks. So that will be a bit of fiberglass that's coated in resin, but it's just literally sticking up off the surface. So you want to uh, sand those down and get the surface nice and smooth. So when you do your flood coat, you get a nice, perfectly smooth edge and obviously you get a nice consolidated look throughout the whole system. So again, you're looking for any items like that where it's a bit fluffy, you need to take those off. Any hard lines where you haven't really consolidated the mats 100%, you will always miss bits. It's, you know, we, we are all human. Uh, the main thing at this stage is to address it so when you do put your flood coat on it's totally uh, a seamless look sandpaper wise we're looking at anything from roughly around a 60 grit sandpaper you want it quite harsh because you want to take that off and it'll last you a little bit longer so just for instance sand that i would advise if you're in a, a, a built up environment as well stick a dust mask on by all means uh, but literally if you look at this edge we're just sanding that edge and we're sanding by hand because we can feel any uh, sharpness coming through and you can just literally get the edge nice and smooth and then on the front edges again just run over them and spending a lot of time on your corners you just want those nice and smooth and it just gives you a better seamless look as you're going around so I'd take that a special emphasis on your corners and definitely your upstands. You don't want any uh, areas where there's issues. Uh, you need to address them. And obviously you want to avoid any water ingress because we want a seamless and waterproof roof. So what we're going to do now is obviously we've got the FRP trims coming up the upstand. We've also got it going over the round. So what we need to do is reinforce this, this section here where the trim actually meets the board or where the trim meets another trim. And then we'll put a, another layer of fiberglass over that to give that a double layer of fiberglass so it's called double lamination these trims in essence are a form of double lamination so when we use the trims it basically speeds up the work that we're trying to do instead of having to roll two layers of fiberglass over and then put another two sheets of fiberglass over that so using the trims speeds up this process so we only have to do this section okay so what we're going to do now we're going to do the side of the upstand and we'll do this corner detail as well just to show you how to mold those corners so we'll start with the corners first literally what you want to do on a bit of resin find an area or if you've got a spot board you can use a spot board just wet out the area and use a bit of resin and you don't want this soaking you just literally need it to cover the matting grey it up because as soon as that's greyed it will literally start breaking down straight away. So what we'll do, we'll put a little bit of resin on the area it's going to be applied to, because resin sticks to resin a lot better. Over there. And then we'll get the mat, and we'll just slightly pull it over that edge. If you, need to, if you need to tear it to make it a little bit easier for yourself, by all means. And what you do is you're always working away from the corner. So pick a direction, we're working away from the corner 
and all we want to do is literally fold it into place try and get any any big clumps of matting broken down all I'm going to do is let that let that rest for a little bit because while that's resting the uh, styrene in the actual mix is breaking down the, uh, the glue in the matting because all this matting is fused together with glue so the styrene attacks the glue and then it breaks down the glue and enables you to move the threads around on the fiberglass and that's how we consolidate it so I'll leave that to break down a little bit and I'll just put this front section on now <coughs> so again resin sticks to resin so we'll just get a little bit on our roller we always try and do the upstands first because you get the excess resin coming down onto the deck obviously in this situation we was up against it with the weather so we've tried to get all the the deck waterproofed uh, to help the client out and protect his building a little bit better so again coat that so it will stick to and then we've got our tape this is a little bit wider but this is 450 gram bandage and we'll just literally fold it over we always fluffy the ends because the fluffy ends will amalgamate into the rest of the fiberglass a lot easier and we'll just tack that roughly on and then get the roller and we'll just run that straight over and don't worry it's going to look a little bit rough when you first put it on but your idea is to get it completely grayed up when I say grayed up it's just basically coat it in resin and what we want we want that to break down so we'll just put a little bit of resin on so we're looking about 75% on on previous and then top it up 25% on top and you just want that completely coated any white hairs on the actual matting itself you want those completely covered because it will act like a sponge and just soak in a lot of um, a lot of moisture if they're not coated So at this stage now, I'll just double check now to see if there's any runs coming down onto the deck and I'll just take those out with the roller. Uh, the reason for that is because I hate sanding and obviously if we can do that while it's wet, it just saves us doing it at a later date and I'll just run that into the deck. Any excess that comes onto your deck, sort of like little little runs, just run those into, into the deck so then when you put your, your deck layer down, you can actually roll straight up to the edge and amalgamate that and get that consolidated as good as possible. Okay, so I've done a general test across the whole of the roof now, so we need to work out how much catalyst we're going to uh, put into the mix. So we've worked out it's 18 degrees on the roof at the moment, so we'll check the side of the tin. We've got a litre in that, Aaron, haven't we? Yeah, yeah we've got a litre in each pot, so yeah. we're looking at a litre in the pots, 18 degrees, which means there's two scoops in every pot. Two scoops in every pot, okay, one. We've literally gone for the hottest reading across the whole, whole deck, but to be honest, it's averaging roughly about the same across the whole, whole of the roof. So just give this a nice, nice mix. Again, we've prepped, we've got all our rollers ready, all of our uh, paint brushes and stuff like that we need, just in case we've got any runs. We'll give it a good mix now. Just a little bit now, when you're doing your, uh, your gel coat, for instance, you don't want to put lashings and lashings on, because what you'll find is that it will run down and you'll get loads of drips. So what I tend to do is I'll use gravity on my fire, on my side, and just gently run down. If you need to add a little bit more then, you can add that and you can just work it up as you're going along. And just make sure you take any drips out as you're going along. You don't want loads of it on there where it's pouring all over, all over the side of the roof and it's just getting a complete mess. I just want to spread that out nice and, nice and liberal across the actual upstands, etc. And you'll find it goes quite jelly and it's going along because it's quite a thick a thick resin and I'll normally take it roughly about a width of roller 
just down onto the deck. And just make sure I get rid of any excess as I'm going around. And try and do your corners all in one go. As, it, as it's drying, it'll be quite shiny. But what you'll find as it uh, cures, it'll go quite dull. So it won't be as shiny as the uh, what it's going on as. Uh, so just bear that in mind, obviously, if you're talking to your customers or, you know, just managing expectations. But fiberglass generally isn't super shiny anyway. Uh, it's normally the... Uh, the waxes in the actual top coat itself that make it shiny. Obviously this isn't isn't too bad as a system. Gives it quite a nice nice decorative finish. So then guys, so as you'll see now, we've just finished. Um, we've just put the top coat on. Uh, just as a few little pointers for yourself, uh, when you're actually putting the top coat on, uh, you want roughly about two to three mil of products. Any more than that, there's no reinforcement in it. So what you'll find is that it could be too thick and because there's no reinforcement, it could crack. So literally, you just want about two to three mil of products. Uh, when you're doing your upstands, just as a note, Put your, your resin on the actual upstand itself and make sure you spread it out. What you don't want to do is absolutely load the actual upstand with resin because what you find is it will just pour down and go leave, leave you with loads of runs. So just make sure it's spread out, you've got no runs and you're roughly about two to three mil of products once you've done the uh, deck. Go around your perimeters guys, get all your upstands done first and then all you've got to do then is your main open areas which you can easily do in quite a short amount of time with your actual uh, main rollers, so anything from a 7 to a 10 inch roller. I want to say a massive, massive thank you to Aaron, so really yeah. thank you very much Appreciate for coming in mate, because Aaron's given his time and obviously trained uh, me, Pete and Alex into doing the GRP system. It's actually an incredible uh, system, easy to use as well, and if you want to get the relevant NVQ, you go to Train to Gain to Aaron's website. If you want to uh, get Aaron to do any uh, flat roof systems with GRP systems or any other systems really, don't you? Yeah, you we, three do, or four systems? We, we do single ploys, uh, we do uh, sort of EPDMs as well. So guys, a massive thank you to Aaron for getting involved doing this GRP system. We've never done a GRP system. It's an absolutely incredible system. It's actually really easy to use once you've been shown. And I think definitely think if anybody's thinking of doing it themselves, definitely get involved. Check out the links down below of Aaron's website, Train to Gain, and then also Birmingham Flat Roofing if you need any flat roofs. He does do other flat roofs as well, but his main is GRP. Now, I can't thank you enough for coming along and training us. So it's really, really kind of kindly, mate. It's really, really good. And definitely, if you loved the video and you found it very inspirational to get you to do GRP, follow all the links down below. Make sure you hit the notification bell, hit that like button, and make sure you subscribe, guys. Thanks.